asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. What a day. So much going on. A report into the emergency services response to the Manchester Arena bombing was published today. And more on that in a few minutes' time. You would have heard Ollie Barrett there in the news talking about Russian diplomats getting kicked out of every country in the world. Incredibly. And Ireland! Ireland! The Irish have joined in and have kicked out a Russian diplomat. Just the one, though. (laughs) can imagine how that conversation went. Um, But I don't want to dwell on that. The Irish Muppets uh, kicking out one Russian diplomat is an embarrassment to the country. I'm not suggesting they should have kicked out more. Yeah. And what Sergei Lavrov, of course, said, and you heard him speaking in the news, Russia's foreign secretary. He's absolutely right. There isn't a single independent country in Europe. Well, of course they're not independent. Countries are controlled by Brussels. Dreadful stuff. More on it in a few minutes Now, to that report into the emergency services response to the Manchester Arena bombing last May, which killed 22 mostly young people. The report that we heard a lot about today said that firefighters who actually heard the bomb go off in the city were sent away from the scene despite a paramedic arriving within 11 minutes. Out of the loop crews... That's a direct quote from the report. Took two hours to attend the scene of the deadly blast which killed um, so many young concert goers. Lord Bob Kerslake headed up the report and he found that poor communication meant chief fire officers were risk averse and kept emergency trained responders away. The fire services chief apologised unreservedly for the failures. It is believed that suicide bomber Salman Abedi detonated a homemade device just after 10.30 in the evening as 14,000 people came out of that Ariana Grande concert. 700 people had injuries. Mentioned Lord Bob Kerr's Lake who chaired the report. This is some of what he had to say today. Listen carefully to this. I have one or two things to say about it afterwards. And I'll be interested in your opinion as well. Lord Bob Kerslake. The Greater Manchester Fire and Rescue Service did not arrive at the scene and therefore played no meaningful role in the response to the attack for nearly two hours. This compares with an average response time for the service of less than six minutes. There is not one single reason nor one individual that caused this failure. Rather, it was the most unfortunate combination of poor communications and poor procedures. The service will now need to reflect deeply on the wider issues this raises for their operational culture and approach to multi-agency working. We know from the many conversations we had with frontline firefighters that they felt that they had let the city down. They did not. But their procedures, communications and operational culture most certainly did. And that's very powerful stuff and it's very hard to accept this. And I'm going to say now what I said last May. I believe that... 22 people were murdered last May in Manchester and I believe they were murdered by an explosive device. But a lot of questions remain about the alleged bomber Salman Abedi and his father Ramadan Abedi who used to work for MI6 and in fact was part of a plot to kill Colonel Gaddafi, Muammar Gaddafi back in the mid-1990s. Now David Shaler, former MI5 agent revealed this exclusively on the Richie Allen show last year and presented me with the evidence to back it up and he's right. I can't believe that the intelligence agencies didn't know about Salman Abedi bearing in mind that they had an intimate relationship with his father and also bearing in mind that he came back into this country and only three days after coming back in 
he allegedly took a backpack with a bomb to this concert. So what's so strange about that then? And I have to, again, put the caveat, I don't know what did or what didn't happen. I just know that people were killed. So why the problem with the Abedi story? Well, intelligence agencies of European countries or intelligence agencies of France specifically and others told the intelligence agencies of this country that this guy was dangerous, Salman Abedi, that he had been meeting with jihadists in Turkey and in Syria and that he was back in the UK or coming back into the UK and a close watch had to be um, kept on him. And, and this doesn't sit well with me at all. It also doesn't sit well with me, this notion that communication just broke down and firefighters were moved a great distance away from the arena and didn't get access until two hours after it happened. I, I just have problems with that sort of information. Because of everything that's happened in Paris and in Germany and in other parts of Europe, the, the armed response units of the UK police and medical first responders and firefighter first responders, they do an awful lot of practicing and rehearsing for these very scenarios. And it just doesn't sit well with me that these guys didn't show up to the arena until two hours afterwards. Why that is, I don't know. You know, let the truth or industrial complex make wild speculations about what did and what didn't happen. I can't do that because I don't know. But these are terrible questions to be asking and they should be being asked by the likes of Kay Borley today on Sky and the likes of the BBC presenters who do have access to Bob Kerslake. I don't have access to Bob Kerslake. They won't come on programmes like this. So I can't ask them. You know, let's talk about what was known about Salman Abadi and all the rest of it. Anyway, dreadful stuff. And if somebody, as we say in Ireland, if somebody belonging to me, meaning if somebody related to me or somebody I loved was killed or injured in that attack, I'd be screaming bloody murder now asking questions about this report and being asked to swallow that there was just a communication breakdown when they practice and practice and practice not to mention the the the, the very many questions that are there to be asked about agent Tonworth who was Ramadan Abedi MI6 agent and his son Salman Abedi who's supposed to have committed this atrocity he might well have done I'm not saying he didn't but there are a million questions you heard on the news there, NATO is expelling seven Russian diplomats in response to a nerve agent attack in the UK. The security organization's chief, Jens Stoltenberg, said the move would send a message to Russia that there are costs and consequences for its behaviour. 25 countries have expelled Russian envoys in the last two days in solidarity with the UK. All of these countries believe, according to the BBC, that Russia herself was behind the poisoning of Sergei and Yulia Skripal in Salisbury three and a half weeks ago now, despite the fact that no evidence has been presented thus far to prove, to prove that Russia was involved. Do we have to keep saying that? Sadly, we do. Westminster's Joint Committee on Human Rights has found that there's not wholesale censorship of debate on university quite yet, but there are factors at work that do limit free speech. And what this is doing is it is marginalising the views of certain groups. I wrote about this today. This committee is headed up by Harriet Harman and it talks about these safe space policies, which they alleged were introduced to protect minorities, but I believe they were introduced to genuinely marginalised people who are asking questions that are uncomfortable for the establishment. That's what I believe anyway. So they, they are saying, this um, this committee is saying, I should say, that these safe spaces are definitely marginalising the views of some groups and they are affecting free speech there. For me, if you're not in step with progressive cultural Marxism, your opinion, your point of view... And your feelings about things, well, they are dangerous and they have to be suppressed. That's what this is all about. There is, an, there is a report on this on richieallen.co.uk today. I'll tell you what, my friend. 
We had a absolute day of virtue signalling today. I've never seen anything like it. I thought we better have a countdown. We better have a countdown, I thought. Right across several issues, not all on the same issue, we've had unbelievable virtue signalling uh, today. Shall we do the virtue signalling charts, the top three countdown for Tuesday, the 27th of March 2018? Shall we do it? Why not? Unbelievable. Right, at number three, at number three, it's Alex Wickham. Alex Wickham is the news editor with Guido Fox. Here is Alex with his latest hit. It's called Corbyn is the Pocket. Jeremy Corbyn is right when he says there are just pockets of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. The problem is he is the pocket and his supporters are the pocket. You know, we had a protest yesterday, two of the leading Jewish groups in this country protesting against the leader of the opposition. It's totally unprecedented. They were holding placards saying Corbyn is the pocket. This is not, you know, the only time that Jeremy Corbyn has made a mistake where he hasn't seen the anti-Semitism. He wrote a letter in support of the disgraced Church of England Reverend Stephen Sizer, who suggested that Jews and Israel were behind 9-11. Corbyn wrote a letter in support of this man. Corbyn was a member of a group run by Paul Eisen, a self-professed Holocaust denier. He, Corbyn, supported Raid Salah, who pushed the blood libel. Again and again and again. And again and again. Corbyn is the pocket. Alex Wickham coming in at number three this week. Up five places to number two. It's our old friend, Tory Tom Tugendhat. The Tory Zionist with the ridiculous surname. Tom is the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee. How did Tom get that job? That's a good question. Here's Tom's latest hit single. It's called Russia believes in no rules. What we are seeing today is a Russia that does not believe in the rules. In fact, it actively believes in no rules. What it is doing, Madam Deputy Speaker, it is seeking out every tie that binds, every alliance, everything that you hold dear and true and seeking to break it. And that is why, Madam Deputy Speaker, the repetition of lies by useful idiots, the propagandising of untruths by adjuncts, is not just a foolish thing to do, Madam Deputy Speaker. It is not just unwise. It is actually and actively harmful. That is why we stay away from Russia today and Sputnik. Not because they show an alternative vision, but because they deliberately undermine the truth. Top man, Tory Tom Tugentan, keep your children away from the fire and RT and Sputnik and strangers as well. But Tugentat and Wickham are light years behind today's number one, the number one virtue signalling progressive Muppet of the day is the Speaker of the House, John Burko. Boris Johnson jokingly referred to Labour Party Shadow Foreign Secretary Emily Thornberry as Lady Nuji, as her husband is Sir Christopher Nuji. But Thornberry uses her maiden name, possibly because Nuji is silly. I don't know. Bojo the Clown was jesting, but Burko was never going to miss an open goal like this. This is world-class signalling. Here's Burko with the Shadow Foreign Secretary has a name. First of all, we don't name call in this chamber. And secondly, secondly, I'm dealing with the matter. The right honourable gentleman will listen and benefit from listening. Secondly, we do not address people by the titles of their spouses. Get in. The Shadow Foreign Secretary has a name. Yes. And it's not Lady something. This is brilliant. We know what her name is. And it is inappropriate and frankly sexist yeah. to speak in those terms. Yeah. And I'm yeah. not having it in this chamber. That is the end of the matter. No matter how senior a member, brilliant. that parliament is brilliant. not legitimate. It will not be allowed and it will be called out on it. And I require no chuntering representative position from any occupant of the Treasury bench. I've said what the position is and believe me, that is the end of the matter. Blah, 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 blah. No chuntering from the, from the officers of the opposition. No chuntering. John Burko there, that's the uh, virtue signalling chart for Tuesday, 27th of March, 2018. It's time to play the music, it's time virtue signalling Muppets, right?